Ladies and gents, I'm Lucy GVX and this is, is it too late to stop climate change? Well, it's complicated by the channel Kozgazat in a shell. Yeah, is it too late? I mean, look, climate change, even though, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely sure that man-made climate change is real, but it's not that specific that you can really see it. I mean, it might be too late, it might not be too late, there are variables there. Even though, you know, there are graphs showing that there is a good enough chance that it is already too late. But uh, I think, we, you know, the, the, whatever technology we have right now, we could still, I guess, stop it and somewhat reverse it. If we act right now and act really hard. I mean, you know, there are always going to be climate change deniers, obviously, uh, usually paid by the major, you know, companies like, you know, petroleum, different type of companies, Koch brothers and things like that. So, and, you know, obviously, these scientists will say something, they will put out some theories out there, there will be people who follow that and constantly debate you. There are people who debate flat earth, so of course, there are going to be people who are going to debate climate change issue too. But yeah, climate change is real. 99% of scientists agree on that. There should be enough of evidence that there is. Only few scientists here and there says that mm, climate change is uh, still out there. While majority of them says an expert in this field, all of them says the climate change is real. I mean, yeah. So is it too late? Uh, let's... Well, we hope not. I mean, if it's too late, we are fucked. So we hope not. But yeah. This is by the channel Kuskazar in a nutshell. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes Kuskazar video gets blocked, so I don't know, I might have to put checkout box where the video is, but I guess we'll see. I've took quite a few Kuskazar videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cast. There's a playlist I've created for it. Kuskazar in a nutshell, reaction, something like that. You know, uh, check out the playlist too, like Tier Zoo, uh, CGP Grey, uh, Oli Sarkastic Proxy, and Internet Historian, History. Yeah, let's do this one. Climate change is just too much. There's never any good news. Only graphs that get more and more red and angry. Almost every year breaks some horrible record, from the harshest heat waves to the most rapid glacier melt. It's yeah, the latest thing that just happened to me was the damn cyclone that just came a few days ago. Now you would be thinking like this could be anomaly, and it probably you know it probably could be an anomaly, but I don't think it is. First of all, you know I can feel uh, the you know weather's changing here and there, uh, seasons changing in that time period. You know uh, monsoon season here used to last uh, you know good enough two three months. Now it doesn't last us that long. It just lasts around one and a one and a half month or something like that at best. Other times there is no rain at all. And when there is a rain, it's way too much. It floods. A cyclone came here. I've never experienced something like that in what more than 20 years. So, you know, usually never cyclones touch here. I mean, cyclones come and go around the places, but never where I live. I experienced cyclone here first time. I see the trees basically, you know, because of the wind, you know, bend and move. And, you know, basically, even our power grids were not ready for that because it never happens here. So, you know, it was surreal. And I, I, I think that's going to, you know, increase in the future. I'm going to see more and more cyclones and things like that here. So, yeah, I can already feel the climate change here. Endless and relentless. We've known for decades that rapid climate change is being caused by the release of greenhouse gases. But instead of reducing them, in 2019 the world was emitting 50% more CO2 than in the year 2000. And emissions are still rising. Why is that? Why is it so hard to just stop emitting these gases? Money. Yeah, see, the thing is, even if the, all the countries in the world suddenly drastically realize, it, you know, screw this, all the climate deniers, you know, sit outside on the bench, we're not going to hear you anymore. It's fixed. Climate change is real. We are doing something drastic now. But what? We can't just suddenly stop, you know, burning coal and petrol because the alternative would cost a lot right now. Over the time, it's going to be, you know, more cost effective. I mean, you know, we are going to spend less over the time. But currently, if we make drastic changes, it's going to require immense level of money that people don't have. So even if we take initiative right now, we cannot just stop burning fossil fuels just like that. Our collective CO2 emissions can be expressed as a product of four factors and their relationship with each other. 
Two of them explain why worldwide CO2 emissions are still rising and two explain how we can stop that. Population size, economic growth, energy intensity and emissions per energy unit produced. Number one, population size. People need food, homes and clothing and they demand luxury products from iPhones to $1 cheeseburgers. More people, higher CO2 emissions. It's a very simple equation. The global population is growing and according to the UN, it will level off at about 11 billion in 2100, which is 40% more than today. The only way to slow down this growth is investment in healthcare and access to contraception and education in developing countries. But even with massive investment, it will take a few decades for the effects of lower birth rates to manifest themselves. So the global population will keep growing for the foreseeable future, and as a consequence, global CO2 emissions will rise over the next few decades. Number two, growth or getting richer. But it's not just about our numbers. The richer and more developed we are, the more emissions our lifestyle produces. A programmer in the US has a higher CO2 footprint than 50 farmers in Uganda. The world's wealth is growing almost everywhere. And although it's far from evenly distributed, economic growth has led to the highest standards of living and the largest reduction in extreme poverty in human history. Growth has become the dominant mantra of the world's economies, no matter what kind of political system they have. It's unlikely that rich countries will give up the concept of growth anytime soon. But even if they were to, developing countries want to become rich too. For billions of people, the end of growth would probably mean staying poor, and so developing countries are not willing to stop growing their economies. All in all, we can be sure that growth as a guiding economic ideology is not going to go away anytime soon. More countries and their citizens around the world yeah, but, you know, uh, growth should not stop when you think about it because it changes your ideology. I mean, what does it even mean? If you don't want to grow anymore, what are you even doing? I mean, it, it, it leads to the question which is kind of dark. I mean, obviously, growth is going to be one of the key factors of everyone, whether you're in a developed country or not. So, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, uh, thinking it like that is going to make any difference. You know, uh, growth becomes, I guess, you know, out of hand. Uh, then, you know, basically investing in some different planet, you know, trying to find uh, if we can, you know, basically live on different planets would work too. But, you know, stopping growth is going to be an extremely hard thing to do. And I don't think it's good for the species either. ...will grow and become richer, while the rich economies will continue to grow their wealth. There are some signs that growth can be decoupled from CO2 emissions, but we're not close to that yet. As a consequence of this growth, CO2 emissions will rise. OK, so far we've learned that because of population growth and economic growth, humanity's CO2 emissions will increase. Which is the opposite of what should be happening. We need to slow, peak and then reduce annual emissions. The next two factors describe how we can actually do this. Number three, energy intensity. Energy intensity describes how efficiently we use energy. A street food vendor in rural Brazil might burn coal to cook, while a street food vendor in France might use an induction stove powered by nuclear energy. The latter is way more efficient. The more efficient something is, the less energy we need to do something, be it powering a metropolitan area or grilling a kebab. So making our technology more efficient and coming up with more efficient ways to organize our societies is one of the most important ways to reduce the modern world's CO2 dependency. This can mean everything from reducing power consumption with AI, the electrification of the transportation and industrial sectors, or sustainable concrete production. The opportunities for improvement are almost limitless and human ingenuity can run wild. Yeah. But we know that increasing efficiency alone will not be enough, mostly for three reasons. One, direct rebound effects. This means that once something becomes more efficient, it's used more and so overall the increased efficiency does not lead to a reduction as impressive as you would first think. 
God or damn. worse, sometimes. Oh God, that is so true, isn't it? I mean, how are you going to stop human nature? That's the question here. If you make something more efficient, people are going to use it more. Uh, rather than, you know, use it just what they need and, you know, I guess make most of it. So, you know, something becomes more efficient, you know, let's try to uh, do more power intensive work because now it uses less power. So, you know, we can do that. So overall, you used the same power, but you did more things. But in the end, you used the same power for the same purpose. Times more efficiency makes humans not use less of a resource, but more of it. When planes became more fuel efficient, ticket prices decreased and more people started to travel by plane. So making things more efficient does not automatically mean less energy use in total. It might have the opposite effect. 2. Indirect rebound effects Sometimes when you save money on a thing that's become more efficient, you might spend it elsewhere. For example, if you buy a more fuel-efficient car, you save money on fuel and end up with extra funds in your bank account that you might spend on a vacation and take a flight with. So, in the end, you might actually emit more CO2 despite getting a more efficient car. 3. And lastly, the more you optimize for efficiency, the harder and more expensive it becomes to get more efficient. So, over time, the return on investment slows down. And with many technologies, we are already pretty efficient. But regardless of how efficient we make our economies, as long as we need at least some energy, we will have emissions. Efficiency alone won't create a zero carbon world. This brings us to our last factor. Number four, CO2 emissions per energy unit used or our global carbon footprint. Humanity's global carbon footprint is the CO2 released per energy unit generated. For example, coal plants release much, much more CO2 than solar power per unit of energy. This relationship is crystal clear. The more fossil fuels we burn, the higher our CO2 output. Fossil fuels are the greatest lever humanity has right now. Of course, it's impossible to shut down coal and oil overnight without throwing society into chaos. But the reality is that we're not doing nearly enough to keep fossil fuels in the ground and use lower carbon alternatives. Yeah, see, the thing is here, uh, what scares me most is Germany. Uh, you know, I recently learned that they are stopping all the nuclear plants and opting for something different. So, uh, you know, because they're afraid of nuclear power or something, which is kind of weird coming from Germany of all places. Not really backward country, you know, not really, you know... Uh, it's 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 a basically engineering marvel of a country and they are thinking like that so it's scary what if france decided that we don't need nuclear plants now and they start to do same thing i mean uh, these are the country where people should look forward to like look at that look at the france they're using lots of their power from nuclear power plants they should look to countries like germany like look at that europe's one of the biggest countries there is you know they are using some kind of nuclear power or something too but no uh, uk uses a lots of renewable energy all the windmills and everything so what if they stop doing that somehow for whatever reason so yeah you know already developed countries have some form of you know great energy sources like that they just need to expand on but they are doing actually opposite of that so and countries like india china china is investing a lot in uh, solar panel and plants like that india is doing it too but not at that scale obviously you know india doesn't have china money but india is tr trying to do that too but obviously it's not at the larger scale that it should be but india can't because india doesn't have that kind of money yet so but yeah still it's still on that path so all the country in the world should slowly try to do i guess i think nuclear power plants is the answer about it because you know solar panel yes that you know bill nye once says that if you if you put solar panel in this area of uh, country of france that solar panel can basically feed energy to the entire world and when you look at the map france is not that big con compared to the entire world so there are lots of places like sahara deserts and god knows how many places that that is much bigger than that so you could put solar panels there in australia you could put solar panel there but the issue is storing the energy so anybody who figures that out anybody figures out you know hydrogen cell issues there is you know storing of that there are lots of promising aspects of the future anybody figures that out it, it it's going to be so easier to stop climate change like that but right now it's an issue 
we need to do two things to speed the transition away from fossil fuels. First, we need to use the real leverage we have today with today's technology. There are a lot of things we can do extremely quickly. We can leave nuclear power plants online longer. We can cut subsidies to the fossil fuel industry and funnel them into renewables. We can price carbon emissions harshly and increase the price each year to create strong incentives for the world's industries to transition. Methane has much uh, higher, you know, problem, you know, climate problem than carbon dioxide. How many cows are there in the world? I mean, there has to be a lot of cows to be cows to be a problem. I mean, they made a joke like, okay, cow farting is an issue <laughs> on Fox News. But apparently it is. It really is. That's how many cows are in the world. So that's just the number is kind of like, you know, making me go like, what the hell? How many cows are there that they're farting is causing an issue? We can enforce strict standards for energy efficiency and for any type of new construction. We can phase out fossil fuel vehicles. Next, we also need to invent new and better technology. Without new technologies and innovation, it will be impossible to achieve a zero CO2 emission world, be it from technologies like carbon capture or a new generation of nuclear power plants to new batteries that revolutionize the energy storage from renewables. But innovation takes time, years and decades. And we don't have this time. Every year we keep adding more carbon to the atmosphere. This means we can't keep relying on innovation alone. We need to find ways to reduce emissions today while we invent what we will need in the future. The less fossil fuel we burn over the next few years, the more time we give innovation to catch up. The more low carbon energy infrastructure we build today, the more we can compensate for economic growth and the people born today. The more coal power plants in construction we stop from being finished, the more CO2 we save. Neither innovation nor the alternatives we're using today alone can solve rapid climate change. But innovation together with a decisive move away from fossil fuels where it's possible today could do it. Solving climate change will be complicated. We have to account for the needs of billions of people and the reality that right now society runs mostly on fossil fuels. This will not change overnight, but it needs to change as quickly as possible. And it is still very much possible. We'll look at different aspects of climate change and how to solve it in more videos. Let us know what kind of stuff you want to know more about here on YouTube or join us in our subreddit. Yeah, climate change, probably the biggest and most complicated issue that we are facing. This is one of the, you know, I'm, use, I'm, I'm more of a realist. I don't get, you know, I don't, you know, put my hands in the air and scream outside like, you know, what's going to end? I see, you know, more optimistic realism type of thing. Like, you know, I see things, I'm like, okay, let's not, you know, uh, let's not over-exaggerate something, all right? It is what it is, that kind of thing. So, you know, when I see climate change being the realist, I don't know if we'll be able to solve that. So the future seems grim to me, but just because how the human nature is and how people are reacting to this, because I'm not the kind of guy who just sees something, who just see a shadow in the sky and put 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 his air, you know hands in the air and like okay, world's well, gonna end. I'm not that kind of guy, and yet still I see this and I feel like okay, this is kind of grim. But let's hope, you know, I'm wrong. Let's hope we can stop this. Let's hope, you know, one day people see sudden result and immediately just, you know, snap out of it. Like, okay, we definitely need to do something. And drastic measures take place, I guess. I don't know. All right. That was the climate change. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. I did this link in the description. Check out the castle. Please check out the end cards. And I'll see you next time.